Hello Church, welcome to our Good Friday service in a very different but a unique way. But I want to welcome all of you, every family at home and uh, everyone in your different workplaces maybe, I do not know. But welcome to our Good Friday service 2020. Well, um, we are excited that we are able to still be in touch with you, connect with you in spite of the circumstances that we are under but God is good. Well, we are excited for Pastor Bernard, who is going to lead us in a time of worship. So let's welcome Pastor Bernard, who is going to help us to just lead us in a simple time of worship. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Bernard. Hi, blessed Good Friday, everybody. Welcome to EPCC online service. We're going to take this time to worship the Lord together. Amen. So if you are ready, why don't you stand to your feet. Let's take this time to remember all that Jesus has done for us on the cross today. Amen.
Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord, that you have poured out, Lord, for us. Today, we thank you, Jesus, truly for all that you've done. Lord, because, Lord, of your works on the cross and your death on the cross, today we live, O oh God. We are able to have this victory, this life, O oh God, because of all that Jesus you've done for us. With this, we want to give you praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, one more time. Let's give Jesus all the praise. All the glory. Amen. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Bernard. Thank you for leading us in a simple time of worship. Well, we just want to make sure that we are able to connect with you and also be able to walk you through this Good Friday service. I feel that this is a very important Good Friday. Why? Because of what happened in the first Passover celebration that took place thousands of, thousands of years ago in Egypt when God called all the children of Israel to gather in their home and to partake of the, of the roasted lamb. Now, God told them specifically, this is, this is found in Exodus chapter uh, um, 12, and the Lord told them specifically not to boil the lamb, but to roast them. Now, why, why is that so important? Because it will speak of in the New Testament of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, that who will go through the judgment, the fiery judgment of God for you and me. And that is what Jesus did for us on the cross. Now, on the first Passover celebration in Egypt, the, for every family, they were all locked in in a home. And the Lord commanded them to be in the home. And as they are in the home, we know the story that the Passover lamb that was sacrificed, the blood was put on the doorpost and the angel of death that came passed over the house of God's people. Now, there's something so powerful, there's something so powerful that we all need to know, which is this. I want you to know that in this Passover, we are all at home. We are all locked in in a home. And we are ready to experience a Passover celebration in the form of a communion. Now, do you know that as the Lord commanded them to stay in the home, there was a miracle in the house. There was a miracle in the house. If you were to see all the scriptural evidences in the Bible, there are so many evidences of miracle that took place in the house. The Acts chapter 2 incident 
when the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Bible says they were all in their home, and there was the there was the suddenly there was a sound from heaven, and it filled the house. Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The most amazing gift of the Holy Spirit presence in the apostles in the early church happened in the home. Now Elijah raised the. The, the young man who died in the home. And Elisha did the miracle of a widow uh, who had, um, you know, was going to lose their, the, the, uh, her two young sons. And the miracle of the oil happened in her home. And we can see Jesus did many miracles at home. Well, there were miracle of Jairus' daughter that was healed. Peter's mother-in-law that was healed. Jesus healed a paralyzed man. He healed the man with a dropsy or swelling of the food and the legs due to water retention took place in the home. There were many miracles in the home. Even as we all are locked in in a home, like the children of Israel were locked in in the first uh, Passover celebration in Egypt, well, there's something powerful is going to happen. I believe that God wants to speak to us and minister to us. So if you have your communion elements and I'd like to invite you all to pass it around to your family members so that we can all partake together. Can I invite you to stand? Now when, when we invite you to stand uh, even on a, on a video or, or a online or pre-recorded service like this, uh, the reason is because we want to put on the attitude and the habit of worship. When we do this in the church, we do it. When we do it at home, we do the same. When we worship, we stand up. When we take the communion, we stand up because we are honouring the Lord. Amen. You can even dress up like for Sunday service if you want to. But we honour the Lord. That is the most important thing. So let's stand as we partake of the communion together. The night when Jesus was betrayed, the Bible says that He took the bread and told them, This is my body. The same, like the same way that the, the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb of God, that was, was roasted in the fire. Jesus' body was also beaten because the judgment of God that was supposed to be upon us came upon Him. Hallelujah. And His righteousness comes upon us. Lord, we thank You for this bread that speaks about Your broken body. Like the first Passover lamb that was roasted in fire, that speaks about the fiery judgment that was supposed to be upon us, was upon that lamb, and upon you, Jesus, the Lamb of God for us, who is our Passover Lamb. And so we thank you and we celebrate that, Lord, that we are blessed and we are protected by what you did for us on the cross. And we receive this bread with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. In the same way, the Lord took the cup and told them, it is, this is the cup of new covenant for the forgiveness of your and our sins. Now, remember what they did with the, first, the blood of the first Passover lamb? They put it on the doorpost. But I want to tell you something. God did not, did not only just give us protection. He gave us salvation, which is more than protection. So we rejoice that even as the families of the children of God in Egypt that took the first Passover meal together, huddled in a home, locked down in a home, today we are also in a home. And we believe there's going to be miracle in your home. Miracle in your home. I want you to take this believing that this blood that was given to us through the blood of through the death of Jesus on the cross reminds us of what happened to the Lamb in the book of Exodus chapter 12. And so we receive this miracle. Lord, we thank you as we partake of this juice that speaks about the blood of Jesus, which speaks about what happened on the first Passover where the blood of the Lamb protected the people of God. And we declare that protection over us. We declare that there's going to be a miracle in our house. There's going to be a miracle in our nation. There's going to be a miracle in the nations of the world because of what Jesus gave us and the victory that come and the salvation that come 
through the finished work. We thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. But take this, believe, miracle in your home. Amen. Amen. Okay, even as we have partaken the communion, I would like to uh, encourage you to be seated and uh, so that we can receive the word. And if you are taking down notes, you may do so. We don't have any sermon notes or PowerPoint for this time, but just I want to speak from my heart to you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this word. Let this word become life and healing and health to your people and victory that comes through the proclamation of your word. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Well, the title of my message is called More Than Protection. More Than Protection. Why do I want to speak a message like that on the Good Friday? Well, I want, I, I want to help you to see that sometimes when we are facing danger in our life, it is very common for us to just look for protection. And I think that's common sense, that is human um, reaction, wanting to get protection. But if I were to tell you today that God, has, God is interested to give you more than protection, what is it that God wants to give us? Well, taking you back to the first Passover meal that took place in Exodus chapter 12, that will help you to see what I'm trying to say when I meant more than protection. Reading from Exodus chapter 12, verses 4, all the way to verse 7. Now, this is what the scripture says. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, remember I said that each one is supposed to take one animal for each family, and they're supposed to sacrifice it, and the blood is supposed to be put on the doorpost, and they're supposed to eat the animal roasted. So verse 4, the Lord said, If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with other family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be of a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. Verse 6, take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of the first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides of the, and top of the door frame of the house where they eat the animal. Okay, and verse 8 talks about that they're supposed to roast the meat over uh, fire. Now, so, <clears throat> of course, when the angel of death came by in Egypt that night, every home that had the blood, the angel passed over and means they were protected. Well, do you need protection? I'm sure you do. I'm sure at a time like this, we all are desiring and longing for protection. Isn't it? We all are longing for protection. But is protection the only thing that we need? Or is protection the only thing that the Lord offered for them? Well, do you know that the Bible talks about that the whole experience of them celebrating the first Passover was a depiction, a picture of Israel's liberation and freedom from the land of bondage to the land flowing with milk and honey known as the promised land. So now, the entire experience of escape that they went through from the land of bondage over 430 years in Egypt and walking into the promised land is exactly what is spoken of of our experience as believers that when we left our sinful lifestyle and we stepped into our new relationship with Christ which is like walking into our promised land in Christ, is the exact experience that was depicted in the Old Testament when the children of Israel left Egypt to the promised land. So what was God giving to us when we left our Egypt, our sinful nature, our sinful past, left our Egypt, because Egypt always speaks about the old life. And when we left our Egypt, our old life in the world, and embraced Christ and accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you know what? How did that happen? Because we were redeemed by the blood. So there, see, there's a picture of a blood. You see, in fact, more space in the Bible was given for the final plague 
which is the plague of the Passover, then all the other nine plagues that the Bible speaks of on the chapters before chapter 12, more space, more information. Why is that so? Because the last plague speaks about the blood. Of course, the first plague where um, Nile became blood was also about blood, but it's different than what happened in the last plague. The first plague, well, they all were inconvenienced for just one week when they couldn't drink the water. There was a stench because of the blood and the animals in the river died. And so there was just a week of inconvenience. But the last plague was something that shook them and terrified them and took something away, the firstborn of all the Egyptian families. And that was devastating. And only the blood could do that because it protected the children of Israel, but the rest had no protection. So you see, when we got saved, what happened? The blood had to be brought in. The blood had to be brought in. So let's, let me read for you. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says this. Hebrews 9, 22. You can turn to your Bible. You can refer to it. Hebrews 9, 22 says, For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Romans 5, 9 tells us this. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. See, one more time in Romans 5, 9, the blood of Christ is brought forward. One more time in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, verse 18. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Do you realize in these three passages of Scripture, in fact, many other places that you will find that we are redeemed by the blood. See, the, the last plague covers more information ever than all the other plagues. Why? Because of the blood. And why is the blood? Because the blood is the picture of redemption for them. Now, it was not only just protection. Yes, there was protection. Yes, the angel of death could not smite the firstborn of the Israeli because of the blood. The blood spoke and said, like what we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, the blood of Abel speaks louder than the blood uh, the, the, the blood of Jesus, sorry, spoke louder than the blood of Abel because why? The blood that was on the doorpost spoke and said, somebody already died, a lamb already died. Blood was shed here, so there is no need to uh, another child to die in this house. And so that's the reason why they had protection. But beyond protection, God was giving more. And I want to tell you today, EPCC, that as we celebrate this Good Friday, God is not just interested in giving you protection. He wants to give you salvation. He wants to give you more. And that is the picture of them leaving Egypt. On that night when all the firstborn of Egypt died, the next day they had freedom. What 430 years they could not do, the blood made it possible for them. What we could not do to get out of our sinful lifestyle through our own effort and our good works cannot be done. The blood of Jesus made it possible for us to experience. And that's why Scripture tells us the blood is the power of redemption. Now, the judgment, remember this, to just to stress further why the blood is so important. Remember, the judgment in the land of Egypt was not just upon the Egyptian gods, was not just upon the Egyptian people and Pharaoh, but the judgment was also upon the children of God. Yes, because they rejected Moses and they had idolatry in their hearts. And so the judgment was also upon the Egyptians and Pharaoh and the gods of the Egyptians, the pantheons of the Egyptians, as well as the children of God. What does that tell us? Isn't that what Romans 3.23 tells us? That all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It is the picture of the world. 
See, if the, if the children of God were not under judgment, they wouldn't need the blood. See, that's the reason why everybody in Egypt was subjected to the judgment of God. But because of the blood, because they had the blood, it protected them. Because they had the blood, it is a point of redemption. We have the blood. We partook of the, of the, of the cup just now that speaks about the blood of Jesus. We have the blood. We don't just have protection. We have redemption. Now, look at the way how God provided the lamb that provided the, the, the blood for them. Starting from the days of Adam and Eve. You know, if you know that Adam and Eve sinned and they wore the fig leaf, I don't know how they could live with the fig leaf, right? How do you live with the fig leaf? How, they need to do a lot of changing because the fig leaf eventually dries up, isn't it? And it's very pricky and pokey and uh, it's so uncomfortable. But of course, God had compassion and mercy on them and, and showed them that they would need a lamb. So the Lord sacrificed a lamb and clothed them with the skin of the lamb. So each one of them had a lamb sacrificed. Adam and Eve, one lamb for one person. Then when we look at the Passover, the first Passover, just now we read, and the Lord said, one lamb. For the whole family, the Lord said. Then the Lord introduced another, word, another celebration, Jewish celebration, called the Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. Which the Lord says, one lamb for the entire nation. So you see, one lamb for one person, one lamb for one family, one lamb for one nation. Look, hold on. The Bible says, when John the Baptist came, in John 1.29, and when he looked at Jesus and John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Do you realize from Adam all the way to Jesus, one, one lamb for one person, one lamb for one family in Exodus 12, the first pass Passover, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, one lamb for one nation. Now, one lamb, Jesus, to take away the sins of the whole world. Come on, people. This is the lamb of God that has been given to us that will become the sacrificial lamb that will pay our price. So, when he died, what happened on the cross? He provided forgiveness. He provided a position of righteousness for us. And he brought us into a place of right standing with God. And we read that in Romans 5, 9. Let me read it one more time. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. So the blood that we talk about many times in Exodus 12, it's not just protection. Why? Because God is interested in giving us redemption. He's interested in giving us redemption. So God is not just interested in giving us protection. If God wants to give us more, why not? See, what's the problem if we are only just asking God for protection? So you see, we say, God, protect me. God, protect me. Oh, we take communion. Oh, God, protect me. The, 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 the blood of the Lamb protected the children of Israel, so the communion cup protects me. See, after a while, when this plague, when this coronavirus is over, this COVID-19 is over, do you think we'll think about protection? Uh, maybe. Maybe because some danger might come, maybe traveling purposes, going on an aeroplane, we ask for protection, maybe. But what if those dangers are no, no longer there? We may not remember the need for protection. If things are normal, business as usual, look, we're not going to ask for protection because we don't need it. See, then what happens? If that is the case, we may not even think about the Lord, but only think about Him and we need protection. That's why the title of my message is More Than Protection. You need to see what happened in Exodus chapter, uh, sorry, in Exodus chapter 12. The first Passover is more than just for protection. It is for our redemption. It is for our redemption. Look, in fact, the Lord said in Exodus 12, verse 1, while the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instruction to Moses and Aaron. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. So that means what, that was, what was celebrated on the seventh month, now the Lord said, no, from now on, 
whatever this month will be called the first month. Why? Why is this so important? Because our future is no longer based on our past, but it is based on our redemption. Our future is not based on our past. God is telling them, look, for 430 years you have been subjected to slavery, but now as you celebrate this Passover, this will be your first month. Why? Because this is the beginning. God was telling a restart. You know what? Uh, uh, a reconfiguration. God was realigning everything to begin with this redemption experience. Isn't that what we experience? We call it a new birth, a new life in Christ. Everything was reset for us so that we can start with a clean slate and a clean position, right standing with God as the righteousness of God. So the reason why God changed the month to the first, this to be the first month, because future is not, is not based on our past, but it's based on our redemption. So the Lamb provided the redemption. So, so this is what we need to know, and this is what we need to understand. And it is so important that we see this. See, when they cross over and move to the promised land, they cross from the land of slavery to the promised land. They experience a redemption from Egypt to a new life. From slavery to freedom. I was a slave. You were a slave in sin. God took us to the other side. So what is God telling us through this sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb? God is telling us, I'm giving you not just protection. Why are you only asking for protection? In fact, in it and through it, I gave you redemption. Redemption means you have more than protection. Remember, isn't that what we learned last Sunday's sermon? And when Pastor Rachel preached to us in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, that says, if Christ has given us His Son, what more with Him will He not also give us all things? With Christ, will He not also give us all, all, all things? So here we are, we are so scared about COVID-19 and we are only asking for protection. But in Christ, Romans 8.32 says He has given us all things. Come on, He is taking us to redemption because protection, only our needs are met and we are happy. Needs are met, we say, bye-bye Lord. Uh, needs are met and we don't think about God anymore, maybe. But when the Lord calls us to redemption and understand redemption, He's drawing us to a relationship. He's drawing us to a relationship. And that's why the blood of Christ is the one that purchased, you know what, us from our old life to a new life. The blood of Christ didn't purchase our sin, no. It purchased us. It purchased you and me. It cancelled the power of sin. It broke the authority of condemnation that was spoken on us because of sin. But the blood didn't purchase sin. But the blood purchased you and me. And that's why it's a relationship. God is interested in a relationship. Just imagine, you know what, uh, Susie and I, let's say, wanted to buy a new car. And so we save up the money so hard, we worked so hard. After three years, wow, we managed to have 40,000 ringgit. And with the 40,000 ringgit, I tell Susie, Susie, we have 40,000 ringgit. Today I'm going shopping. I'm, go sho I'm going for shopping, for car shopping. Uh -huh. So, um, of course, this is after MCO. Lah, huh? So, we are going for, I'm going for shopping. And I say, darling, when I come back this afternoon, it's going to be awesome. We're going to enjoy all our hard work of raising that 40,000. So, now I go to the car uh, used car dealers, so many of the used car dealers, finally I picked one car. So when I come, uh, when I, when I come back home, I, I take two pails, two pails in my hand, and I go in uh, and clean up the car that I just purchased, and then wash the car. Of course, they already cleaned it, lah, but I wash again one more time, clean again. I have one pail full of dirty water and one pail full of all the rubbish and, ru and, and dust that I found inside the car. So, uh, without telling Susie that I've come home, now I walk to the house, knock at the door, and I tell Susie, Susie, look what I got for 40,000. Look at what I got for 40,000 ringgit. And I 
show her the pails, the two pails, one with dirty water, one with the dust. Let me tell you what, you know what Susie's going to do? All the housewives, I know what you're thinking. And I think you are planning the same thing that Susie would have done or will do for bringing dust and bringing dirty water in back for the 40,000. See, God did not purchase some sin. No, if God purchased sin, you know what? He will put up all our sins in heaven's library and He will enjoy all of them one by one. You know, and see, see how much I paid for all this, you know, all the sin, the records of all our sin. Then it, and He opens up this huge, thick, thick, very heavy book and He opens up and says, who is this? So thick. I've done a great job in redeeming this person. Who is this? Rachel Cole. Wow. Terrible. Whew. But she must be thankful because I purchased the sin. He puts it back. Then you see another one so huge. Bigger than the other one. He pulls it up. Boom. Lands on the table. And the entire heaven shook for five minutes because of how heavy it was. And then he opens whew, the list of sin. Oh, renders. And he looks, who is this? Bernard Lee. Oh, no. Who? Oh. And I'm sure Bernard Lee is grateful for my redemption of a purchase of all the sins of his. Then he look around and he see just a few pages, just a few pages. He say, what is this so few? He pulls out. You know, no effect. And he says, who is this? Oh, Sam Surindran, I'm not surprised. He puts it back. Let me tell you what, look, look. If that is what, that is what God did, purchasing our sin, then there's no relationship because he just got rid of some bad things in our life and left us to be on ourselves. No. He redeemed us. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. And that is the reason why I'm telling you, don't just go for the protection. Go for the redemption. Go for the redemption. And when you have redemption, you have all things. You have all things in Christ. Look, there's an American... Uh, association of Consumer or Consumer Association in America and they came out with all the helpful solvents that can assist the American consumers or the American public how to get rid of stains and this is what they came up with you know a consumer group in America came up with this solvents or this cleaning materials to help remove stains. And they said this, alcohol removes grass stains, glycerin, glycerin removes ballpoint pen stain, ammonia removes blood stain, boiled water removes berry stain, uh, vinegar removes crayon stains, and hydrogen peroxide removes magic marker Stains. I know some of your housewives, you're taking notes, huh? Uh, all your helpful stain remover uh, uh, supply for you. And then bleach will remove, will remove uh, mildew stains. And then lemon juice, remember, lemon juice will remove rust stain. But you know what? The sad part for me when I read it was when not a single suggestion was made to remove sins stain not a single suggestion was made to remove sin stain yes there is protection because of the blood but the blood is the key to a redemption that brought us to a relationship with christ it was the key that brought us to a relationship with christ romans 8 32 let me read it for you it was preached last week Romans 8.32 Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? If God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? God wants to give us everything else in Christ. Come on, don't just ask for protection. Listen, don't just ask for protection. Ephesians 1, 7 says this, He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. 
He redeemed us. He purchased us with the blood. Why? Because of a relationship. And He is willing to give you all things. So don't just ask for protection. Come on. The redemption has given you all things in Christ. You are blessed, my friend. You are blessed. So I want to tell you this. As we celebrate this Good Friday, may you be rested in this truth that we are no longer evaluated based on our past. But our future is not based on our past. Our future is based on our redemption. And that's why the Lord changed the first month of all their activity begins with the Passover. Same thing. Everything began in our new birth in Christ. We say our new life in Christ begins in our redemption. So, are you convinced now that the blood of the Lamb is not just protection? Yes, there is protection. In fact, we have said this many times. There was protection. The blood gave them protection. It's true. True. You cannot be wrong. But you cannot stop there. You need to go beyond protection because the next day they were free from the land of slavery. Never before. And they also had gold and silver of the Egyptians were given to them. There was transference of wealth upon them. But I'm praying, you know what? See, I'm not focused on the wealth. I'm not focused on the wealth. The Lord will bless. If the Lord wants to give us from the effect of what happened on the first Passover. So I'm not focused on the wealth. But I'm asking for the wealth of the nation, which is the souls of men and women. That at this lockdown, just like in that lockdown, when they left Egypt, look what happened. Silver and gold were given to them and they, are, they had redemption. More than protection. But I'm praying that this lockdown will make people to think why they need a saviour, why they need a God, why they need, they need a God who can, who can not just protect them but give them more. I pray the treasure the treasure to me, the silver and gold for me, are the souls of men and women that will come into the kingdom as this lockdown comes to an end, as people become desperate, as people be begin to see what God is doing, what the Lord is working out right now, that after this, there will be a, a, a powerful revival, not only a powerful revival, but there will be a powerful you know, salvation of people who will come, the treasures of the world will be given to the church. Hallelujah. I'm believing God for that. I'm believing God for that. And you know what? That miracle happened in a home. And that miracle happened in a home. And you partook of the Lord's Supper just now in your home. And I believe as it, as it happened in the home, protection and redemption happened in a home, I'm praying your home will experience that miracle your home, and, and we cherish the time in the home. And I believe God saw all this and, and, and he, has, he has seen all this and he's, he's able to put us in the home again now and preparing us for a miracle. Get ready for a miracle. This is an important Passover. This is a powerful Passover season. This is a powerful time because not only are you getting protection, you're getting more than protection the treasures of the world and the blessing of redemption is coming upon you. Get ready, get ready, get ready, church. Because that's what happened for us on the salvation when Jesus gave His life on the cross. And that's the remembrance of Good Friday for us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord take this word and inspire you and give you joy as you also move on from looking at what happened in Egypt, from, the, from Egypt to the promised land. As we have moved from our old life of sin to the promised land, which, which Jesus also spoke very powerfully in, in John chapter 5, verse 24. He says, I tell you the truth. He says, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. Hallelujah. We have moved from death to life. There's a passing over. There's a moving over that happens through that redemption. I pray that we in our homes will experience that 
moving over from death to life. So it's not just protection, it's redemption and it is life. See the life, the miracle in your home, in Jesus' name. Father, I bless your people and I pray that this season of COVID-19, Lord, will not just make EPCCNs to think that only they need is protection. No, Lord, I pray that you will take us as you did in John 5.24, that through your redemption, that we have moved from death to life. Lord, here we are moving, not just from, from, from just daily protection to another day protection, to another day protection, but we are moving from death to life, Lord, I pray for your people. That even as the first lockdown in Egypt was in a home, that we are all in a home and we are observing the Lord's finished work through the communion. Lord, send the miracle in every home. In every home, I declare miracle in their homes. And from here, Lord, will come redemption, will come, Lord, the transference of the wealth of the nation, the souls of men and women. Lord, you will give it to us. Give us the souls of men and women that there will be a revival of souls, revival of people that will come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Oh, we pray. We pray all this in Jesus' name. While your heads are bowed, I want to ask, is there, or while, while anyone in the, watching this, a TV program, maybe someone in your home who is a member in the family, maybe a friend that is watching with you and you're watching this video recording and maybe that friend, maybe that person, you heard that the believers have not just protection but redemption and much more. And you want that protection. You want to move also from what Jesus said in John 5, 24, from death to life and you want that life. Say this prayer with me. Say this prayer and receive in Jesus' name. If you're ready, you can say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you. You promised me life. I thank you. you giving me more than protection. I thank you that the blood of Jesus is able to wash away the stain of sin. And I receive this life that comes from Jesus' death on the cross. As I celebrate Good Friday, I'm reminded that I can receive Jesus' life. I open my heart and I receive Jesus' life that was given to me. Now, I move from death to life. From protection to redemption. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You are now a new believer and you have moved like they did, from bondage to promised land, from death to life. And you have not just protection, but redemption. And you can experience miracle in your home. God bless you. God bless every one of you. I pray this Passover uh, that was celebrated on the Exodus 12 will be a reminder as we celebrate Good Friday today that there is going to be miracle as it was then. A miracle in your home. Receive it and walk in it. Life in Jesus' name. God bless you. Awesome. See you all for our Easter celebration. And we're going to do communion again. Get your communion ready. And let's enjoy the service together on, on the weekend. Blessings to you. And see you soon.